Hey, have you ever wondered where car dealers come up with their prices? Wholesale, trade-in, retail, MMR, black book, NADA, what does it all mean? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you where car dealers come up with their prices when you're trading in a car, when you're buying a car, when you're selling your car. What is your car really worth to us? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Let's get started. Hey, just to start with, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. I own a car dealership and I've bought thousands of cars and I buy cars every single week. Well, there's no way I can know the value of every single car. So today I'm gonna to show you how I come up with my prices as well as how other dealers come up with their prices when you're trading in a car, when you're buying a car, or when we just purchase cars from the auction. So technology today is amazing. When I first started, there wasn't anything at my fingertips. I was using flip phones. So I had to really know what everything was worth off the top of my head. A lot of times you could flip through your black book or your blue book or whatever. It was literally a book that you had to carry around with you and flip through it. I'm not that old. I would just know what I wanted to sell something for prior to purchasing it, which meant doing a lot of research. I knew that if I could sell a car for $10,000 and I'd probably have to invest $1,000 into it based on what I've looked at, what I found that it needs, well, I want to make an X amount of money so I know what I need to pay based on what I can sell for it after my investment. Now, there are a thousand apps that I'm going to tell you about all of them. If you're a dealer or if you're just a retail customer, so you know about what we should be paying for our cars when you go in to purchase the vehicles. Now I say it all the time, you make your money on the purchase, you don't make your money on the sale. When I'm buying cars, I know how much money I'm gonna make roughly when I'm purchasing the car. If I know it's worth 10 and I buy it for seven, I should be able to make around $3,000. So I have about a $3,000 buffer when I'm purchasing that car in gross profit, gross is before expenses. Well, even to this day, I still do it that way for the most part. Now, one of the biggest auction houses in the entire country, meaning they're all over the nation, is Mannheim. The, the Mannheim auctions sell cars to dealers all over the country every single day, both online or in-house in their brick and mortar auctions. So they know what cars are selling for. So let's say this 2019 BMW 540i M Sport with 16,000 miles. Well, some have probably already sold through the auction, so they know what they're selling for, and they list that information for us dealers to research and be able to see that people are paying this price for this specific car. And that's called the Mannheim Market Report, the MMR. This is what most dealers are using to get their values on cars. So if you as a customer are coming to trade in your car to me, the first thing I'm gonna do is scan the vehicle identification number. Let me show you how it works. Now I'm gonna use this BMW as an example in a lot of segments of this video. So I'm gonna to go to my Mannheim app right here. Then I'm gonna open the door on this car and you will see right down here a barcode. And there's typically one right here on a lot of cars as well. So I'm gonna open my Mannheim app and I'm gonna scan the barcode. After I hear the click, I know it's doing its research and I can type in which vehicle it actually is. This is an X-Drive M Sport. And you can see that it comes up with an adjusted value of $43,600 with 18,000 miles. Well, I can actually correct the mileage. Mine has 16,000, so it adds $410. And then you can do a condition report. A condition report is a rating on, on the condition of the vehicle. If you lower or increase the condition report, it increases the value. So dealers should be paying around $43,800 for this car. And we also get an auto check report that shows me one owner, no accidents. Now an MMR is a very, very basic guide. Now me purchasing, if I wanna wholesale it at auction, if I wanna purchase this car or purchase your trade-in and just run it through the auction, I know that I should be getting around $43,800 based on what has sold already that's similar to my vehicle. Craig, that can't be the only way you get your values, right? No, it's not. Well, I use the Kelly Blue Book app too. Everybody can use Kelly Blue Book. It's super easy to use and I go off rough trade. I always wanna leave a buffer to me. So when people are trading in their cars, they mysteriously forget to mention whatever issue they're trying to hide from me. 
every time. So we always have to assume the worst. Everybody always thinks that the car dealers are the liars, but really buyers are liars because they have no problem trading in that car and sliding it in with whatever problem they have without telling us. And then we have to find it, fix it, clean it, repair it, and then resell it. So there's it. a lot we have to do to those cars before we can resell them. So I have to assume the worst. And when I look up the Kelly Blue Book app or I look it up on the computer, I go for rough trade-in. And that's what I try to pay on all my cars. Now, if the car is really, really clean or if it's something you really, really want, obviously it's worth paying more for. Well, what if it's a rare car, something like this 1993 Dodge Viper RT10 with 9,000 original miles? You, you really can't put a price on that based on traditional websites and applications for my phone because not many of them sold it's a rare car so what can you do you can go on ebay and see what's listed for sale now the problem is everything on ebay is usually listed for sale not what's being sold so sometimes you can filter those out to see what things are actually selling for you can also go on the bring a trailer website and find out what things have sold for on there that's a lot of special interest vehicles another one i have right here is this 90 eagle talon tsi that's that's a difficult car to put a value on, so you really have to do your research to figure it out. Really? So when I'm purchasing a car and trying to resell a car, retail is absolutely the most I'm gonna get, unless it's something spectacular and you can ask for more than retail because it's so rare, but that's not common. And even asking retail, that's for those dealers that can finance you through the roof or get bad credit buyers financed at 100%. That's not me. I try to sell everything at just around private party. So if I buy it at trade-in, I can sell it at private party because websites like CarGurus rank your inventory based on price. Basically, it gives you the best deal first, which isn't always the case. I mean, it doesn't say anything about needing tires or if it needs brakes or if it has dents and dings or scratches or has a smoke odor. It doesn't say anything about that. The only thing that gets you to the top of the list at CarGurus is price. So I can be selling junk as long as it's the cheapest one on the website, they will list me number one. Now, I don't wanna sell junk just to get to the top of the list. I wanna sell great quality vehicles, but I still have to be at the top of that search ranking. So for me to get there, I have to buy them right. Like I said, the profit is made on the purchase. So for me to get to the number one ranking on car gurus, I have to sell them cheap. They have to be marked as great deals to get to that first and second page. And to do that, I have to buy them right. Now you as a buyer can figure this stuff out on, on your own. Now be weary of websites like CarGurus and Cars.com and AutoTrader that rank you right at the top, that doesn't mean it really is the best deal. Value and great deal isn't the same thing. You might be buying junk for the lowest price. That doesn't mean it's the best car, so always beware of that. Now let's talk about NADA. NADA is basically a value that you can look up on your own. You can do it on your phone, you can do it online, on your computer or your laptop or your iPad even. You just go online and you see what your car is worth. Clean trade, rough trade, retail. That way you know what you should expect when you're trading your car in or if you wanna sell it yourself. Now, like I said, I try to sell my cars at private party. That way when people come to me, they already know it's a great price and I can show them. I can show them on Car Gurus that it's a great deal or I can show them on Kelly Blue Book, on NADA. If you do your research or I can show you in person, I price my cars to sell. I don't price them to give you the second best price I give you my best price up front, and that's what got you here. So we've spoken about how dealers get their prices. We've spoken about how you, if you're a retail customer, can get your prices or what you should expect to get for trading on your car. Let's talk about all the apps that are available to us dealers. Now we have Carbly, we have Autoneek, we have Mannheim MMR, we have VIN Appraiser, Laser Appraiser. There are so many apps on our phone that we can use. Now just to use one for an example, VIN Scanner, which is hosted by Laser Appraiser. This is an a la carte type program, just like Auto, Neek, and Carbly, and all the others, meaning you pay per service. So they provide you the Carfax, they provide you the Auto Check, they provide you the Kelly Blue Book, the MMR, everything, all in one app, but each one you have to pay for. So let's scan this Audi A5. Now it tells me about the Audi A5. We're gonna change it from a base coupe to an S line because that's what this one is. We're gonna change the mileage because the mileage on this car is 130,000. We can add the color. It also tells me if it's ever been founded on auction. 
dealer studio so you can add how much you want for profit it gives you an appraised value there's a lot that this app does it tells you what i should expect to get on the retail market what has it sold for at auction well not many have sold so it's difficult to tell had it been a more common vehicle this would show up so if we just change this to a regular audi a5 it tells me that they're going to auction around 2800 to 8500 now if we go to Mannheim, the MMR is about $6,300 and I should expect to sell it for around eleven six. dollars Now based on the condition, I should pay more or less of what they're saying. And it tells you about the mileage and what has sold in the past 12 months. Going down to Black Book, Black Book is something else that you would pay additional for. So this is an extra price. It tells me the value there. And then NADA, again, something that you would pay extra for as well. So all of these prices you can see are about the same. They add one little extra feature like NADA tells me this car was $45,000 new. Then it goes to Kelly Blue Book. This is available to everybody, and I use Kelly Blue Book all the time. It's free. You can use it as... You can use it if you're a consumer or a dealer. And it tells me like if someone was going to trade this car in, I'd try to pay around $4,900, but I could pay up to $5,900 for it. And then if you had a Carfax or an auto check report that you paid for, it would give you those as well. And that is a dealer only app. You can't use it unless you own a dealership, unless you're licensed and registered with the auction. Now there's more to it though. It's all based on supply and demand. Over the summer, the price of Corvettes were through the roof. It was astronomical, higher than I've ever seen based on how our economy was going with COVID and everything else. Well, now that we're going into winter, the demand is a lot lower and the supply is a lot higher. So the prices have decreased. So I bought a 2016 Corvette Stingray in August and I had some shipping problems. So the values were way, way up but it took so long to ship to me that it actually showed up in the fall when the demand was starting to decrease. So by the time I got it cleaned up and reconditioned and ready for sale, it was now middle of October. So that MMR value had gone down because the demand had decreased. So you can see how it fluctuates up and down. Now we don't just use MMR, but we do use it regularly. So when we're at the auction or when you're trading in your car, that's pretty much a close value on what we should expect to spend. So if you ever get the opportunity to go to a dealer auction, you'll see dealers running around like chickens with their heads cut off with their phone scanning VIN after VIN after VIN trying to see what each car is worth. Well, that's not really what a car is worth. It's what dealers are paying for that specific car at that specific moment. What have recent transactions sold for like that vehicle for that price. So it gives us an idea of what other dealers are paying. And that's basically all it is. But in the summer when everyone was overpaying for Corvettes, the price on Corvettes was through the roof when I scanned it. It's all it does is say what dealers are paying. It doesn't actually have a value to it. So if the demand is high, it just tells me that this is worth what it's worth in the past 30 days, not an actual value. It's based on what type of situation we are in the economy, what type of demand there is at that moment in time per vehicle. If I scan a VIN on a Corvette in July, and then I scan a VIN on a Corvette in January, the prices are gonna be extremely significant. Now, me personally, I try to be under MMR always. That way, I know if I ever have to wholesale it at the auction, I can at least get my money back. Now, I've already said your profit is made on the purchase. If you're a consumer or a dealer selling to the consumer, remember, it's not about the deal you got. It's about the deal you think you got. Now, I bought a 2015 Chevy Silverado a few weeks ago, and I bought it so right. I scored this thing and I had enough money to put anything it needed into it, fix it, clean it, repair it, list it, market it. Somebody bought it for me in less than a week. And you know what they said? It's the cheapest one they could find for the year and the mileage and it was the cleanest one they could find for that price. He was absolutely pumped and he didn't negotiate a dime. Now I didn't want to negotiate a dime because I knew I bought it right and I knew my price was right and that's why he drove three hours to get the car. So he was so happy to pay what he paid for that car because there really wasn't another one out there. I made $4,000 on that truck, okay? So I bought it $4,000 behind where I knew I could sell it for and still give him a great price. So when I say it's not about the deal you got, it's about the deal you think you got, he thinks he got an amazing deal, which he did. He got a great deal on a great car. I made $4,000 
on a car that I knew was an excellent car, that I knew was a great price, that I knew was gonna sell quickly. We're not always making $4,000 on a car. Sometimes we're making 1,000, sometimes we're making no money at all. I sold an 04 Toyota Tundra today for a loss. Why? Because I've had it for so long that we just need to get rid of things. So sometimes we just don't wanna carry cars. We need to liquidate, we need to free up some cash, so we just move them on. Not everything has a high gross. It depends on the time of the year. It depends what we paid on the car. It depends how desperate we are for the cash in that time of season. So everything changes seasonally. Everything changes all the time. Now when talking about value, it's fake. It's Fugazi. It's a made up number. There's no value to anything. It's what you think it's worth. A Corvette is worthless in January, but worth all the money in June. So people are willing to pay what it's worth to them. That's value, that's what a car is worth. Now let's just use the two trucks for example. The 04 Tundra, they got a great deal on it. I made no money. Does that mean they got a better deal because I made no money on it? Or did the person that bought the 15 Silverado get a great deal, but didn't because they made $4,000 on it? Who's to say what's a better deal based on how much profit I make? Essentially, both people got a great price on great cars. I was just in a different situation on the selling end per vehicle. Now we're talking about value. What's the value worth to you as a buyer? What's the value worth to you as a seller, to me as a seller? I wanted to get rid of the Tundra. I wanted to move on. I needed to free up that cash to buy another car. So that's my value. It's worth me selling less to somebody so I can move on. Corvettes are worth all the money in the summer and worthless in the winter. That's why I buy them in the winter and I sell them in the summer. And trucks are worth all the money in the fall and winter and not worth as much in the spring and summer, which is why I buy them in the spring and summer. And I always relate it to Walmart. Walmart doesn't sell back to school backpacks in December, right? They sell them in July and August. So you buy them early, you pay less, and then you sell them later. Or if you wanna talk about value, you might buy your backpack one week after back to school week. That, that way you save money on that backpack and to you, there's more value in waiting a week than purchasing and having a brand new backpack on the first day of school. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't because this isn't only a dealer page, this is for you consumers as well. I'm giving everything to you for free. So make sure to subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, adios.